right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Rob Buffington, who is in Nebraska. How are you doing, Rob? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Rob is, a, uh, Rob is an experienced consultant in the HOA management space and brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to management companies and mid-sized businesses that struggle with, struggle with vendor services, staffing, bookkeeping, and overall management issues. And Rob belongs to an organization called Gordian Business Solutions. And what we're going to talk about today, because here's a fascinating topic, uh, I think, uh, Rob, the topic you're, you're going to talk about, efficient strategies for fixing remote staffing bookkeeping and management issues. Okay, so let's face it, Rob, if we turn the clock back even 5, 10, 15 years ago, outsourcing was still very much kind of in its infancy unless you were doing big, massive outsourcing to big companies. But but small companies or medium-sized companies like outsourcing and a, a, a bookkeeping function or having remote, you know, remote workers, contract workers, or even even contract management, those were things that were so alien to most organizations. But now it's suddenly become mainstream and we're building these kind of hybrid organizations. But we're not we're not we're not coming up with any 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 mechanism or, or rather construction to bring them in together efficiently. Yeah. It before before COVID, it was really a dirty word. You hear outsourcing, you immediately think call center. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have good experience with call centers for a good reason. So the, one of the main things we try to overcome is this association of outsourcing and call centers. And they're two entirely different things. Um, what we do is we provide college educated employees who can do the job as well as anybody local and they just happen to live somewhere else. And we help people to realize you're not adding a call center. You're just letting people work from home. Yeah. We're getting you the best talent and we need to adapt and form a model around that. Yeah, no, and, and I agree with you. And, and I think that is, that is one of the things that, you know, smart organizations are suddenly starting to realize that the talent is out there. The talent just happens to be in places that you're not. And therefore, exactly. if you want to leverage the best talent, then you need to figure out how you can leverage remote resources. And to be honest, they, it's, you shouldn't be looking at it as like, oh, how am I going to? You should be looking at this as banding because, number one, you can bring in great talent, but also it kind of changes the mindset of an organization a little bit, too. Yeah, it's I always tell people it's not inferior price because the cost of living is better you can get better quality people while still paying less than you would domestically and both sides benefit mm -hmm. um so i think that's one of the key mental shifts people have to make yeah and, and i like what you just said there about it's it's a it's a win-win for both sides because i think that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that if if you allow somebody or if you recruit somebody who lives somewhere where they want to live good costs living they have their lifestyle whatever it is then they in return you know they're going to do a really good job for you or they're going to try and figure out how to how to impress you uh, because they want the job and they want to Absolutely. take this lifestyle so it is i think a lot i think not enough companies are not looking at it as a win win yeah. Well, in a long-term solution, people think of it as a 90-day solution or a six-month solution. I have employees that have worked for me for five years. Mm -hmm. And I go down there and they come up here. We see each other, if not monthly, quarterly, at least in person. So it, it is a completely viable model and not just for entry-level positions. I have vice presidents in Mexico. I have division heads in Mexico. So you can do anything that doesn't require you to be in the office, which thanks to COVID is most things particularly in accounting, customer service, the, the back office and front office positions that aren't face-to-face, -face, you can do pretty much anything you want. Mm -hmm. And I think there's another thing that we need to overcome too, and there's that attitude that unfortunately still remains in a lot of organizations where they hold external resources to a higher standard than internal resources. And it's always like when anything happens, it's like, oh, blame the external resource because it's always easier to do that. And I think that's something that we need to get away from. Yeah. And similarly, they 
there's it's both they hold them to a higher standard while subconsciously thinking that they must be inferior for some reason when the truth is it's just people great people that live somewhere else doing an amazing job but there are differences that you have to adapt to there are cultural differences there's difficulties in working remote that you have to be prepared for but the good thing is that once you prepare for these things your organization will be permanently healthier and you can actually scale faster Mm -hmm. So just like when rolling out a new software, things are going to be worse to start. Like you're going to learn the new software. You're going to study. You're going to put the time in. And if you don't and it doesn't work, you don't blame the software. You blame because you you blame yourself for not putting the time in. In the same way, adapting to a new way of working requires just as much input. So why wouldn't you put more effort into people than you would do a software? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who blame the software too, you know, and yeah. look at themselves. As we always say, like, you know, the most of the issues uh, are caused uh, 12 inches away from your monitor. Yeah, ID10T problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so in your estimation, um, do we need kind of like radically new models or, or new like organizational structures or what do we need to do to, because this isn't going away. And I think that's the other thing you alluded to this, like people think, oh yeah, you know, we did some of this during COVID or we did this temporarily because there's a recession. I mean, we're going to go back to normal. There's no such thing as normal, number one. Uh, and you're probably not going back to it anyway, whatever your definition of that was. Um, so do we, do we start to need to build new models and new organizational like structures in order to make this work efficiently? I think yes and no. A thought exercise that I take my clients through is I tell them for small and medium businesses, I say, I want you to pretend that you just bought this company. There's no staff in place what are your job descriptions going to be? Pretend this is a brand new business and just start putting tasks together and see what job descriptions you come up with. Because too often people try to do a one-to-one exchange and it's it has to be the exact same job description it was last time. And I mean, that's just, that's bad advice in general, whether it's domestic or remote, you should always be looking at it with fresh eyes and asking yourself if it can change. But like I had a call a couple hours ago, ironically, somebody from Carlsbad Mm -hmm. and he's an accounting firm. And I said, uh, or CPA firm, excuse me. And I said, here's what I want you to do. Take a three by five card or open a note on your phone or whatever it is you need to do. And I want you to start writing stuff down as you think of it. Like, hey, it'd be great if I had somebody who could do this. Hey, I wish this could be outsourced or so-and-so is doing this and he doesn't need to. That should go down a level or two. And just start with the list. Start with what needs to be done. Forget job titles, forget anything. Then at the end of a week, I want you to take it and see together logically to form a, a job description because you can't have a tax auditor who also does your social media and answers your phones. Yeah. Those are three entirely different job descriptions, but people will try to lump them into one. But if you start with just what does your company need and then build it in a brand new job descriptions, things will change and new processes and just ask yourself, why does it need to be like that? Not just because it's always been like that because Jim didn't like dealing with customers or Steve did it this way. Just start fresh. Yeah. And you've just raised a really interesting point there. And I, and I think this is where a lot of people struggle is that a lot of the jobs have become very, very specific. Like, you know, you mentioned social media person, maybe you need, you know, your search engine, your, your website, your SEO, like search engine optimized. Um, but you may you may not need somebody to be doing that full time. So right. you, using fractional resources or using a, an amount of time. But but I think jobs have become so specific that we need to get used to using probably more people, but for less time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and social media, SEO, design, yeah. all very valid uh, areas. I should admit this, owning a staffing company with over 400 employees, I use Upwork all the time for graphic design projects yeah. because we don't we don't have enough for a graphic designer to do. Or if we do, it's like, I need 80 hours in the next week and then nothing until the next conference comes up. Yeah. So we use fractional uh, services all the time for that specialized stuff. But too often we just copy and paste, yep. never really examining. Like people will say, oh, I'd love to have a receptionist remotely 
But when people come into the office, they have to hand out keys or they have to take in their paperwork and scan it. And I'll always say, well, is there somebody else in the office who could do that and then take something off of their plate and give it to a remote receptionist? Or are there 10 people and you could have one person doing all the in-person stuff and then have nine people remotely? And and let me clarify, I never advocate getting rid of good people to save Mm -hmm. money. That's not what we do. If you have good people, hold on to them for dear life Mm -hmm. because they're worth it. Um, But as positions turn over, as you have needs, ask yourself, could it be done remotely or could it be done better where you're at? Yeah, no, because I I agree with you, because a lot of the times is that when people see a need, you know, as you said, I mean, they'll dig out an old job description or they'll go on the Internet and they'll say, find a job description. But they'll never go through the work, as you just said, of saying, what is exactly that I need to be done and perhaps, as you said, perhaps it's two different people. Perhaps it's part of a person, whatever. But if we continue just to try and always uh, hire a person to do all of these things, you know, that maybe that's on the traditional job description, uh, you know, it's really hard to find generalists nowadays because most jobs aren't general. Yeah. As as regulations get more strict, as technology becomes more and more important, you're going to see people getting better and better at their jobs. Uh, and it's just we no longer have, you know, when I, in, when I was younger, we called them gophers. They just went for they go for whatever you need. Yeah. We don't really have that anymore or we have fewer of them. Yeah. And uh, unless, of course, you work at home and then that's what your kids are there for. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like that might be backwards. I feel like they're gophers sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and it's really, it's really, it's really interesting, Rob, is because it does take, it does take such a mind shift. And I, I do think it takes, a, it takes a mind shift to do what you just said, and that is to take a, a good, cold, hard look at what exactly are the things your company needs to do in order to move forward because we just tend to pile on on other things. It's like we tend to say, oh, I need somebody to do this. To your point earlier, we don't look at, okay, are there bits of that that could be done by other people? Are there, are there parts of that that don't? Are there even parts of that that we don't even need anymore, but that just happen to yeah. see things? So I think I think we need to spend a lot more time on actually looking at resources and looking at what we actually need to be done and then mapping them. Because as you know better than I do, a lot of the times people map jobs to people rather than the other way around. I've got a great person. I think it'd be really cool if they did this, this, and this, rather than this is the organization as a whole. This is what I need. I'm going to find somebody who can do that. Yeah. Um, I I look at it like Legos, each task, and you got to go really down a level, not customer service and answering phones, but answering customer complaints, answering general, you know, break it down as, as far as you can go and then put them where they need to go for who the best person is and what the most logical grouping is. Because as you said, we're getting more specialized. So people who switch back and forth all day are more likely to make mistakes and more inclined to burn out. But the more similar the functions are, the better. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And that's why I think in, in many ways like we should just take all job descriptions and just delete them all and start from scratch because I'm not sure how relevant they are for the the world we're going into right now. Um, and I guess the the other thing, um, Rob, and I guess you spend a lot of time, you know, with this, with your clients and that is, is just building, building that, building that confidence and trust that this can work, that you can operate a company where you don't have people always in front of you or people that you know you know, that you've met face to face and, you know, maybe you have people in different parts of the world doing, but if they're delivering, um, you should be, you should be happy, but it does take a bit, it does take some confidence and trust building. Yeah. Yeah. The same way it did during COVID when we were forced to work from home and people had to adapt and say, how do I know this person is working? And what I always counter that with is, are you paying for eight hours of the back of their head or are you paying for what they produce in those eight hours? If so, what are they producing? Is it answering 170 phone calls? Is it sending 200 emails? Is it greeting customer? You know, what is it that they're producing in that time? And then work backwards and tell me what it takes to generate that. Mm -hmm. Focus on the output, not the seat warm. Because that's what people do. They want eight hours of somebody and just, it's like, great. We have, we 
we do full-time employees, so I'm not knocking that. Yeah. But until you know what they're supposed to do with those eight hours, you're always going to be dissatisfied. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that, like staring at the back of their head for eight years until they suddenly produce their novel. And you're like, what? <laughs> what were you doing all this time? Yeah. Um, but the, uh, on, on, a, on another note, though, like flipping it over a little bit, too, is um, let's face it people with skills are realizing their value in a way perhaps they haven't before and the way that now they can shop their skills so on the on the on the talent side of the equation i mean they're becoming more savvy so i think that if you want access to top talent then you need to start looking at these people looking at you know organizations like yours because i think the talent is becoming more selective, not just the companies. And I think sometimes companies have it backwards and they think, oh yeah, you should be delighted to come work for me. Uh, or And people now with their service are saying, well, let me see, let me see about that. And that's where the job descriptions come into it because we've seen people turn down clients' jobs because it included something that they thought was beneath them, like say a staff accountant who they also wanted to take AR phone calls. And right. The staff accountant said, I've worked for Ernst and Young for five years. I'm, you know, that's that's not what I'm interested in doing. I've paid my dues, I've worked my way up, I don't have to do that anymore. Mm. So it, the more specialized your job description is, the more relevant it is, the better talent you'll attack, attract and re retain. Yeah. And I guess on on uh, on top of what you just said there, then you also have to motivate these people too, right? So uh oh, yeah it's not like you can just, as you said, you can just kind of lump on, you know, extra tasks on them or whatever and uh, without respecting where their talent level lies or whatever. But it's, uh, well, you have to motivate them as well because you're only going to get out of it what you put in. Yeah, definitely. And we've never had a generation that was more powerful, but also had a larger need before they got in gear mm -hmm. the not not only the millennials but particularly gen z this is the generation that needs to believe in the company and understand the company it it's no longer an exchange of goods and services for money they want to be part of something bigger than themselves and in order to provide that you have to know what it is that you are what do you stand for what's your vision Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, though, I mean, if you go global, you'll find that that that's not all, you know, that 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 there's people in various parts of the world who are just happy to really they want to do the work. They want to do the work the best they can. And, you know, you can you can have fantastic relations with people who don't really know much about your company or don't care to know much about it, but they can do really, really good work for you. Yeah, I mean, depends on the situation, depends on the setup and who you're attracting. Mm -hmm. um, I believe for the long term to build a powerful organization, you need people that have bought in believers, mm -hmm. not just for a paycheck, because when you have a paycheck, you can always be outbid. But when you believe in the cause and you believe in what they're doing, that's when people stay long term. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the, the last thing that I'd ask you about, Rob, is obviously when you use people like this, and particularly if they're remote and they're external to the organization or whatever, is uh, communication. I mean, you have to be really good with communication because, you know, they're already maybe outside the or they're maybe, you know, physically removed from the organization. So getting a good communication cadence with all of these resources is very important. Absolutely. And you need to have some type of whether it's Slack or Teams or Google mm -hmm. Chat or texting or WhatsApp. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need live communication. Yeah. There are too many companies and too many clients that we've seen just oh, yeah, I talked to him three days ago and I told him what to do. And it, I say, you wouldn't do that with somebody in the next office, would you? So why would you do it with somebody remote? So there has to be that live communication. And additionally, using video calls is great, but we have less information right now than if we were face-to-face. -face. There's body language, sure. there's stance, there's just subtle cues you pick up on. So you have to work harder on video calls to get that information. You have to ask direct questions, you have to engage. It's too easy to mute and video off through a meeting and you don't even know if they're paying attention. Yeah, no, I think I think that's uh, having something like Slack or Teams or whatever it is you choose to use is is incredibly important because we found that with our organization, like we're in constant contact with each other, and you know our organization is spread to the four winds, but we're we have pretty much instant um, communication, and we believe in that. If you need something, go get it now. You know, don't wait around. Yeah. 
don't don't get into email threads. So yeah, I I agree with that. So where do you um? So what's your advice to organisations, Rob, who may be considering dipping their toe in the in the water of of good outsourcing? Like I said, number one thing you need to start with is that job description and that output. What is it you need? We have so many people call us. I need help. Okay, great. Well, you'd love to. What kind of help? I don't know, man, but I'm drowning. It's like, I feel for you. I'm there, but I, I need more information. P there are people, and I, I was guilty of this in my years past, and maybe even today, I'm not sure, but they think that just more people will solve the problem. And that's like saying, I'm a conductor. My orchestra isn't playing well. Let's throw a couple more timpanis and tubas in and things will get better. No, you have to get the orchestra playing well. You have to figure out what who's leading it, how to give instruction, and then you can bring people on. If you're a mess and you add more people, you're just going to get frustrated. So you have to prepare for it. You have to realize that bringing on somebody, whether domestic or remote, is going to cost you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost time and resources, and eventually it gets better. Too many people think day one is just going to magically be a panacea and fix it. Yeah, yeah, no, and those people need to understand what it would be like to be an, a, a brand new employee or contractor with a remote with an organization that you're not part of. It would uh, maybe if they could put their shoes <laughs> their self their self in the shoes of the other person, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, listen, Rob, this has been fantastic. All of Rob's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell a little bit more about yourself and Gordian Business Solutions. Sure. I'm the founder and CEO of Gordian Business Solutions. We offer a host of B2B products like remote staffing, third-party accounting, consulting, shared services, particularly aimed at those small and medium-sized businesses where you're too small to fly under the radar, you can't do it yourself anymore, but you're not big enough to have in-house counsel and your own HR manager and things like that. So we work on helping those companies get through the turbulent times quicker. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I would encourage people to look at this model because there's a lot of fantastic talent that are opting to be these kind of employees now than, um, and, and be, be independent contractors or whatever. There's a lot more of these people out there so uh, and top talent. So I would encourage people to go look at this as a model. Listen, thanks again, Rob. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again soon.